so hello guys welcome to the part 2 of operations management where we are going to discuss about production system or the process differences between product and service operations historical development of operations management productivity types of productivity factors affecting productivity productivity development green productivity and supply chain management so production system or the process so there are two production system process which is first intermittent production system next is continuous production system under which job shop process technique batch process technique assembly line process and continuous flow process are included next we have now job shop process technique so under this there is high variety and low volume of production so production is done as per individual customers order skilled as well as creative manpower are used in this technique local and general machinery can be used because over here the manpower is given more emphasis it is flexible nature of management system as it is customer based there is flexible production schedule it can be done according to the time and requirement of customer for example tailoring shop restaurants hospitals furniture shops now next we have batch process technique so under here improved form of job shop process technology so it is certain quantities are fixed for production here uniformity in production product size shape and quality is maintained skilled manpower is required advanced machines are used flexible nature of management system can be seen here and flexible production schedule over here we can take the example of heavy electronic devices vehicles machines soft drinks as we know they are produced in mass quantity next we have assembly line techniques so under here there is low variety and high volume of production the parts and components are assembled for the final product heavy instruments are required in order to produce the product there is uniformity on product size shape skilled as well as unskilled manpower are used over here advanced machinery is used it has fixed as well as flexible nature of management system it also has fixed or flexible production schedule for example production of vehicle tv laptop computer mobile now we have continuous process system over here mass production of goods is done using automated system there is uniformity in product size shape and quality skilled as well as unskilled manpower is used advanced machinery is used it has flex flexible as well as fixed production schedule it has fixed and flexible nature of management system for example in the production of noodles biscuits chocolates soap sugar etc coming towards the differences between product operations and service operations so on the basis of nature of output production operation yields tangible output product meanwhile in the service it produces intangible output in the terms of consumption output can be consumed over the time period in production operations meanwhile in the service sector service is to be consumed immediately on the basis of consumer contact 
customer contact is not required for manufacturing operations. Meanwhile, for service operations without contact, service cannot be generated. On the basis of nature of work, production operation is capital in intensive. Meanwhile, service operations is labor intensive. In context to process, complex and interrelated process are included. Meanwhile, in service operation, simple service process is applied. In terms of measurement of performance, under manufacturing operations, sophisticated methods are used to measure. For simple operations, simple methods are used to measure the service. In the terms of market, produce goods are for local, regional as well as international in terms of manufacturing operations. Meanwhile, for service operations, the market is available to the local people only. Now we have historical development. So over here we can see the production era, concept of theories, periods and originators. So under the industrial revolution, steam engine was discovered at the time of 1769 by James Watt. Division of labor was first introduced by Adam Smith in 1776. Division of labor by skills was introduced by Charles Babbage in 1832. Under scientific management, principles of scientific management was first introduced by F.W. Taylor in 1911. Activity scheduling chart for employees was first introduced by H. Gant in 1912 on the basis of human relation Horthro study was introduced by Elton Mayo in the time period of 1927 to 32 for motivation theory it was introduced by Abraham Maslow in 1940s in terms of operation research linear programming was introduced by G.B. Gantanjik in 1947. Meanwhile, Delphi technique was introduced by R Corporation in 1940s. On the basis of quality revolution, GIT was introduced by Tai Chi Ono in 1970s. Total quality management TQM was introduced by E. Deming and J. Churan during 1980s. Business process reengineering also known as PPR, was introduced by Hammer and others in 1990s. Meanwhile, the industrial revolution such as internet.com, www, web chain, supply chain management, these were originated by Amazon, Yahoo, eBay, Google during 2000s. Next, we have productivity. So, it is quantitative relation between what we produce and what we use as resources to produce them. The arithmetic ratio of amount produced, which is output, to the amount of resources used input. So, productivity also refers as work efficiency plus work effectiveness. So, to, in order to calculate productivity, it is total outputs by total inputs, which must be greater than 1. Productivity refers to efficiency of production system. Productivity is efficient use of resources such as capital, labor, land, energy, material, etc. It is indicator of how well the factors of production are used. Now we have ideas for improving productivity. So for improving the productivity, keeping the input constant and increasing the output, it is the best use of the input. Next is reducing the input and supplying the output. If in this case, if machine or input are not in use, then we should sell it as it do not contribute in output. Next, we have increase output 
at less input so after investing in input output should be increased Now next we have types of productivity. So under here partial productivity. Under here the total output is divided by partial or single input which must be greater than 1. So over here it is the ratio of output to partial input. It measures productivity of each input. It might be labor, capital, material or machine. Next we have factor productivity. Over here the total output is divided by capital plus labor which must be greater than 1. So over here it measures total output as well as it measures the labor capital and material as well. Next we have total productivity over here the total output by total input must be greater than 1. It is the ratio of total output to the sum of all inputs. Total productivity measures reflect joint impact of all inputs in producing and generating output. So factors affecting productivity. So internal factor includes hard factor, soft factor, external factors include structural adjustment, natural resources, government, infrastructures and many more. Now we have internal factors. So over here Internal factor can be controlled by the management system. They are managed with some ease in comparing to the external factors. So they play vital role in improving productivity level of an organization. It is also known as micro productivity factors. Now we have hard factors. It includes Inflexible factors which are hard to be changed by the organization. For example, product to meet customer satisfaction and quality product with minimum cost. Next, we have plant and equipment. It includes installation maintenance which increases the productivity. Next is technology. It is high automated and sophisticated technology in order to increase productivity. Next is material and energy where there must be maximum use at minimum cost in order to increase the productivity. Next we have soft factors where quite flexible towards the organization changes as compared to the hard factors it changes according to the requirement. For example over here labor or manpower by giving training motivation team building HR strategy they contribute to increase the labor efficiency. In terms of organization and system, organization of 14 principles or even the balance system can be used in order to increase the organizational productivity. Next, we have work method. So over here, HR management, inventory control, workplace, training and development can improve the working environment. Next, we have management. So over here, ensuring the labor and capital effectiveness which includes improvement through knowledge. And lastly, we have capital. As we know, capital investment improves quality of existing investment. Now we have external factors. It refers to the factors which are not in the control of the management. They are directly or indirectly affecting productivity of the organization. It is also known as micro productivity. So over here is structural at adjustments so PESTLE affects the productivity where political economic social technological demographic labor they affect the productivity the change in national and industrial productivity level next the natural resources which includes manpower land energy, machine, raw materials which are essential for international, national, industrial and firm level. It requires proper policy and strategy to improve productivity. Next we have government and infrastructure where they directly affect the national and organizational productivity. 
the rules and regulation of income and wages of policy practice of government agency transportation and communication system power supply interest rate and taxes they all affect the productivity now we have productivity management so productivity at international level for example a country a productivity can calculate it by total output produced by a by total input by a at national level national productivity can be calculated by gdp at factor cost divided by active population productivity at industrial level can be calculated by industrial productivity equals real value contribution gdp by industrial groups divided by active population of industrial group now we have productivity at company or firm level so over here partial productivity we have studied it earlier where total output by partial or single input must be greater than 1 for factor productivity the total output is divided by labor and capital which must be greater than 1 next is total productivity where total output is divided by total input which must be greater than 1 now we have green productivity so earth summit 1992 made a recommendation on sustainable development and as a result green productivity was launched in 1994 with the support of government of japan the asian productivity organization so it is the strategy for enhancing productivity and environmental performance for overall socio-economic development so the technique and technology to reduce environmental impact of the organizational activity goods and services the main objective to the main objective of green productivity is to enhance productivity by uh, pollution prevention with minimum wastage and increasing efficiency and maintaining sustainability in long term basis now we have objective of green productivity where the first objective is to achieve the higher productivity and reduce negative impacts on the environment efficient use of resources sustainable development reduce poverty making all the stages of supply chain to adopt the green productivity water resources management waste reduction and recycling now we have supply chain management so all the activities associated with the flow and transformation of goods and services from raw materials to final consumers it is the sequence of organizational facilities functions activities that are involved from producing the product to delivering the product it begins with the basic suppliers of the raw materials and extends all the way to final consumer so facilities includes like factories warehouse distribution center outlets and offices the basic objective is to build a chain of suppliers that focus on maximizing the value to the ultimate customer so thank you for listening me uh, make sure you like subscribe and comment to the channel you guys are great keep reading thank you